So I wanted to give a little bit of background. So I actually go up, um, I've been, I was in Doug's class for a year and a half. I was his navigator before for one of the classes, 068. And um, I left because I thought we were going to move and do a whole bunch of stuff and we didn't. So I was bugging Doug that he should start a figurative class with Masterius because he's been painting quite a few figures and totally different from the landscape concept. So I think that was part and parcel how some of this class came about. Oh, it was, that's what you said. You came here and then we drank too much vodka and you talked me into it. And then, <laughs> and then later I said, no, I'm not doing that anymore. I don't want to do that. And you said, why? Why couldn't you do that? I said, I don't know how to teach figure. This is way too hard. Oh my God, you could totally do it. So easy. Just, oh my Lord, just, yeah, and whatever. Okay, we're doing it. Don't worry. And then you went ahead and did it. So here we are. Oh, I didn't even get it. Don't tell him I drank that much vodka. <laughs> oh, I don't know how much you drank, but I did. I drank enough that I said yes. So anyway, <laughs> I... I I, I'm here, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna do this. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, okay, we have someone who joined on the iPhone, but there's no. That's name. me, Michelle. Oh, that's you! I don't even yeah. see you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> he invited me. So who, who I'm just checking up on him. Oh, hi. Hackle. what are you yeah. doing? Oh, Lord. Hi, Michelle. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Michelle Grant. Famous, famous artist. Yeah, you want famous, famous but not rich. Famous. Yeah, I know. I don't know how you get the rich part out of all this, but I'm know, working on we're it. All, we're all going to get there eventually, right? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So maybe we'll start. Everybody knows Doug, Doug Swinton, Calgary artist. Why don't you just give a little bit of an overview of yourself, Doug? For those who aren't familiar with your painting background, oh my Lord. Uh, I'm review. It's a big view. It's a lot to be over. <laughs> uh, uh, I've been painting forever. I don't know. I don't know. What do you want to know? Um, I uh, um, I hate the word self-taught. That's such a dumb, dumb statement. So, you know, most people would go, oh, I'm primarily self-taught. So I did go to art college. Um, I was about two and a half years in and I quit because I didn't learn anything. And I wasn't learning. I was learning nothing, absolutely nothing. And I was very frustrated. So I quit and I became an automotive mechanic and I was fixing cars and I hated that. And then somehow I ended up back in art. It was, I guess, just a destiny or whatever. But <clears throat> so, you know, I, I hate that term self-taught. Uh, I guess I've been self-led, but I've been taught by just about anybody and anybody that I could learn from. So I've had a hundred million teachers and I've taken just about every workshop in the world out there. <clears throat> so, and then I've just formulated my own thing. And I guess, I guess what I've done over the, over the time is take bits and pieces of everybody that I've learned from. And they always seem to have a way of saying it or something that was a little more confusing or hard to understand. So I just boiled it all down into what, what's the, well, I guess because I'm ADD and, and I, and I can't, I can't sit still and I can't learn, but in small packages. So I took everything I learned and I started writing it down and I'd write it down in notebooks on these workshops and I would write it and then rewrite it. And I'd rewrite it with as few words as possible that someone could understand it. Somebody read one of my notebooks and said, Oh, well, how come, that's good. How come I didn't hear that in class? And I was like, well, I rewrote it. And then I just started teaching like that. So I just break everything down into as simple a terms as possible. I always call it sort of LCD, lowest common denominator. And, and I, it's funny, I was just with Michelle earlier today, and I'm yelling at my computer, because the guys on there, I'm trying to look up something, how to fix something on, on my camera for, for, for videoing. And the guy's like going off so fast and talking about this and that. And I can't find that button. And then he goes, oh, do the drop down and then load this up. And I'm like, well, where is that? You're not showing me that. And that's sort of been my pet peeve my whole life is LCD, lowest common denominator. So I can, the way I teach is I'm going to teach you as if everybody knows nothing. And if you know it, doesn't hurt to hear it again. I'm going to start at the ground up and go all the way up and I'm not going to miss a beat. And if you have questions, ask, ask, ask. I will always answer. You could ask me a hundred times and I will tell you a hundred times and that doesn't bother me. I will tell you till you get it. So not to worry. Awesome. That's so my background. I didn't learn anything in art college. That's how I learned to learn. I've taken from everybody and anything I can. I'm still, I still take workshops. I'm still learning. 
And and I'm and I'm gonna and I don't even know how this course is gonna go. So I'm gonna learn while I'm going on in this course. So so we would have we're gonna have lots of fun and we're gonna paint multiple billions of figures and people and we're gonna do peoply things. It'll be a very peoply course. Great. Um, welcome, Bev. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm oh, this fine. Is famous Bev, I see, is here. Hi, Hi Bev. Last time I talked to you, I was in Salmon Arm. All right. That's right. Awesome. Great. So why do you, so, um, so getting back to the course, why do you draw the figure? Why, how did you start drawing figuratives? Because I always thought you were a landscape painter. Well, I guess, I don't know. I guess I'm prim primarily known as a landscape painter. Uh, but I've always found that everything to do with landscape is in the figure. If you can draw a figure, you can paint anything. So uh, the figure and all the hidden stuff that's in there is so, it just relates to everything. And I've always just liked the fact that it was so natural and so, I don't know, it's just people are just so alive. Everything's alive and moving and it's ever changing. And I, I don't know, I just, I, I've always had an affinity for drawing people. I used to draw cartoons when I was a kid too. I would draw, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I just, I just know that it, everything I've learned in painting the figure has seemed to end up relating into a landscape painting for me as well. All, all I've learned about color transitions and turning the form and form shadows, cast shadows, all those things, it seemed to relate better to me when I learned it through the figure and then implemented it into, into landscape. So I don't know. I've, I've just always been drawn <laughs> to the figure and the, and the curvy natures and the, I don't know. I just, people, and, and like people always, even in my landscape, quite often I put some sort of human element to it. It just, or, you know, we're a very tribal people uh you know if humans are very tribal and we we always look for what's living and what's moving nature and 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 you know you'd paint a landscape and you put a small building in it and your eye goes right to the building because we're very tribal so i don't know i guess there's just a giant human element to it so I, i've always i've always been attracted to it and and i i just i love the curvy nature cool. does anybody have any questions for doug at this moment I've got one. Go ahead. Because <laughs> I'm in the, one of Doug's classes. So I'd like to know how are if I was to sign up for this course as well as being in your other one, how would they complement each other? Good question. Uh, well, and I'll tell you right out of the gate, you're going to learn a lot of the same things you learned in the other one. So, mm -hmm. um, and that's not a bad thing. That's a very good thing because we're going to go through all of those elements, um, you know, like the like the five dominations and yeah. and all of the rules that I teach, I'm gonna I'm gonna you know they'll have a uh, a slant to them towards the figure, but you're gonna relearn all that, and I will tell you that I bet you you'll understand it better when you relate it to the figure than the landscape. It's not that you wouldn't understand it; it's just when you see it against something else, you'll go like. Oh yeah, that's the same thing as the landscape, but I didn't think of it like that. For some reason, the minute you take landscape away, and I, I tell these rules to people who paint flowers and people who paint portraits, I tell them the same rules and they're like, oh, I didn't think those rules applied to that. I thought it was just for landscape. I'm like, all the rules I teach is for everything. So I'm just gonna add in the element of how to put people in a painting. Okay. Well, does that find so that a, interesting? You know, there's a lot of overlap, but when I say that, I'm not trying to scare you away by saying, nah, you've already learned all that. You're going to learn it again with a slant to it so that you'll see it in a different light. And I'm going to make you do paint a whole bunch of different things that you probably haven't painted before, which is always a good growth thing as well. Yeah. So yeah. Doug, are, we don't have to know, like, you know, when you, when you re-watch some things, especially some of the Americans, some of the European painters, you know, they do cover a lot of things about anatomy. We don't have to know anything about anatomy. Uh, I'm not, no. So I, see, I don't think this course is, that's the way that this is going to go. I mean, unless the group decides that's what they want, we can talk anatomy if you want. But, uh, you know, for the most part, for me, anatomy, snoozeville. I don't, I don't care. I don't want to learn, you know, like, 
oh, I don't, you know, and I sit there and, okay, we're going to spend three months drawing a skeleton and then three months putting the muscles on it and, and whatever. Yes. I'm going to go through some anatomy where I show you the structure of how the muscle is built to show you where the curves and the lines are in the figure, but we're not going to sit and do any anatomy and we're, you know, and, and any of that sort of thing. So I, I think I, I'd say, uh, uh, you don't, you don't have to know a lot about people for this to work. And, and I think this is going to be more focused on a whole bunch of different ideas of people. So this won't be just painting the female figure in that regard. We will do some of that. We'll paint the male figure too. We'll do some of that. Yes. Um, but this is going to be a little bit about, you know, how do we paint just a figure? How do you paint a figure? How do you paint little figures on the street? How do you put people on the beach? What are we talking about? Like, all different aspects of people. This is not just let's mm. paint some boobs. This is going to, we're going to paint a whole bunch of different, how much people do we put in? Is this, you know, I will paint a few musicians. We'll paint a, we'll paint a couple of cowboys. I don't know. Like, and, and the, and the group will ultimately decide what direction we want to go, but it will always be people uh, focused. Okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Because you okay. do paint a lot of female forms, which you're very inspired uh, by, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I do. Maybe in this group, uh, I, I think putting it into the context of maybe doing a little bit of that. Maybe there's people in the group that have grandkids that they want to paint, like, you know, in a surrounding. Yeah, absolutely. And the male. Absolutely. So, so a lot of talking about. Right. So I'll tell you now, the, the biggest problem that we're going to have in this class is I cannot teach you, you know, in, in certain regards, how to draw. I can teach you a lot about drawing, but I can't teach you uh, proportion and, and things like that. Those are practice things that you're going to have to learn yourself. Uh, but what I can teach you is composition and things about proportion that will help you. You know, I can give you guidelines for that, but, but it's just the same as the landscape. I tell people that, you know, I go take people outside to paint and we're going to paint this barn and, you know, the problem is that they, they don't get, they get a lot of stuff, but they can't draw a barn. And I can't help you if you can't draw a simple form. Like I'll show you some things, but I can't, I can't help you if you don't understand proportion. And that goes through, like I said, everything doesn't matter. You're outside. When I give you a photograph, if you can't, you know, relate the size of whatever's in your photograph to something, that's a practice thing that you need to learn. Mm -hmm. I will show you tricks to that, but, but that's a whole practice thing. So that being said, you want to paint your grandchildren, I'm going to help you do that. But if you can't draw well enough to make it work, then that's something that I'll, 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 will address, but you're going to need to practice that. And that, that's, a, you know, that's, that's how I, I can't teach you that. That's a, that's a practice thing. I know myself personally, like, that's what I was wondering, like, how dry do we need to be? Like, what if we can't, we've never, I've never I've never done people before, so I'm a little worried myself, but as long you as don't you don't have to be that dry, I'll show you tricks to, to break down the drawing, to make it simple. And I think part of the reason I said yes to this is because I don't think anyone that's going to sign up for this class with me wants to draw a perfectly uh, black and white tight representational person i think we all want to be loose and funky and yeah. get the idea that hey i put some people eat people in and we had fun with it and they look like people and 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 in that case i can certainly help you okay, okay. and what about um so will will we be covering i guess all aspects of the form like like a little bit of portraiture um and then will you be providing like figurative reference for us to work from like as a like that's a, a good that's a good that's a great that's a super good question. So um, I don't know about portrait. I mean, I'm willing to do at least a session on portraiture and talk about you know sizes of the head and face and things about that that I know. I'm not sure how much like like I would say at least one month I would make everyone do a portrait and we could try and we could have a lesson and I can give you you know my top ten ideas for a portrait. I don't know that we want to go down a whole portrait rabbit hole because okay. that's a whole year long thing, but we'll definitely spend a month and address that. Um, as to the figure, I, I, I realize that most of you won't have, I mean, you can provide, I, I, so I should go back and say, um, in all my other classes that I do, as, as some of you will know, I usually throw up some reference photos for you to use. Um, the only reason I'm doing that is, for, I got two reasons. One, it saves you a whole lot of time from finding a reference 
And two, it also provides you with a half decent reference instead of the crappy ones you usually show up with. Oh, did I just say that? I'm sorry. I didn't say that. <laughs> Uh, so yeah norm, quite often what happens eight eight times out of ten is you know the problem in the painting is that the reference suck bad reference bad painting so so and and then some of you may not have figurative uh references anyway so i'll always throw up references for that you, you're more than always more than welcome to use your own for sure but i will provide references for you as well which will save you vast amount of time and 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 brain racking trying to find something good i hate but to be rude about... but i'm going to uh i'm going to say goodbye oh. ah, she's heard this all before you talk too much you talk too much you, you guys will love it and by the way you're coming up as ryan swinton i don't know why he always does it is because it's his <laughs> yeah. uh, zoom account. all right you guys have a good time he for it. i don't pay for the zoom account he does <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll provide lots of reference for you and we, and we will have a whole session on taking reference photos too, on how to get good reference so that you've got the proper things to paint from. Yeah. Mm. When I, when I go up and paint with Doug, he just says, Oh, could you, could you have a worse photo to paint from? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tina asked, um, what media is going to be used in your demos? And she, cause she's a watercolor painting painter and she's looking for instruction primarily in that medium uh so i do do figures in watercolor i do paint in watercolor as well so i would say if you signed up i'd make sure i'd at least do one demo in watercolor but i can sure help you in watercolor that's not a problem at all i'm primarily an oil painter and i would i would i would do one of three things when i do demos i'll either do an oil painting demo i'll do a charcoal demo or I would do what I call a charcoal painting, which is charcoal, but I use oil thinner on canvas and I do it like a painting with black charcoal, which is a little bit more painterly than regular charcoal. So I do that, but I would do a, de I'd do a demo in gouache and I do a demo in watercolor if you want it as well. I, I'm happy to do that. So now that being said, the day we do the watercolor demo, just to remember, I'll be very nervous and scared because I haven't painted in watercolor in a long time. But I would, uh, I used to do all my figures in watercolor when I first started. So I would try that again. I'd be happy to go back and revisit that very frightening medium to paint in. <laughs> I, There's no going back with watercolor. You don't, you don't get to go back. There's, you can't wipe it off like you can. Well, that's why it's entertaining. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and does anybody have any questions? Any other questions on the watercolor or medium or color? Um, we, we, we're we're going to, we'll paint in whatever, you can paint in whatever medium. I am going to suggest that we do lots of pencil drawing. There'll be lots of sketchy, sketchy pencil drawings and, and, and lots of maybe we'll do a little bit of charcoal. Everybody should learn how to do charcoal or Conte or, or just do some little, we're going to do some gestural figure, little gestural things and, 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 things to loosen you up and show you because I think what I learned the most was the gesture of the figure can relate so much to the gesture of a tree it's unbelievable so mm -hmm. when you go to paint a tree instead of painting a bouffante tree to look at the gesture of a tree look at the gesture of a of a cloud look at the gesture in a pile of rocks and I'll show you the form, the way the figure turns and, and the angles that are going on in the figure relate to the landscape as well. And I'll show you how to I'll show you how to relate that to landscape. So all of that will pay off. And listen, we don't have to be able to draw perfect figures. This is not about, you know, you know we're going to paint wonderful figures and throw them in the gallery and sell them right away. This is about learning to and ultimately, I think what I'd like to do is that you'd be you'd be able to sketch some people and feel comfortable with it. And also, let's throw some people into your landscapes. So you could do some street scenes or, or a few people and stuff and not be afraid to have them, you know, that your landscape is always, there's my lilacs and my fence. Isn't it wonderful? I love it. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not I'm not picking on anyone here. But yeah, wouldn't it be nice to have a few people walking down the street? Yeah. Right. Yeah. She's going to text me later and go, why did you say that I'm mad at you? <laughs> no, I just, I want to learn to draw better. Yeah, exactly. It all relates to drawing too, the gesture of the landscape, the drawing, and how to sketch quick and be comfortable with it. So all of that. 
I don't know how long this class will go on. Um, originally, my first few classes were supposed to be six months. I've got some of them that are now two years long, and and I'm not even sure where to take them anymore because they've done so well and they've grown so much. But so I'm looking at this like maybe a six month project that we'll have six different areas that we can touch on, and then we'll go from there. If if it if it works out for six months, or you want to learn more, hey, I'm here and we'll do more. But at this point, I'll put together six lessons, and then we'll take it from there. Hmm. That sounds interesting. So this is going to go on. This is the one that's on Tuesday of every month. Am I right? The third Tuesday? Third Tuesday of every month. I think it's replacing my 138 class. Yeah. Okay. I have that open at first. I had a, I was supposed to replace a different class, but they've decided to keep going. So I gave them that night and then they changed. But anyways, third Tuesday of the month, I believe it's going to be. Yes. Okay. It yeah. starts September 19th. Yeah. So next month, right when I get back from Yellowstone. Yeah. Okay. What what time is it? Is it going to be morning, evening? 6 to 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Okay. All right. You got any other questions? Bev Duke had a couple questions. She said, when you do a charcoal painting, how permanent is the medium afterwards was the first part. And the second part is, can you recommend a really good brand of charcoal? The stuff we buy here is not very good. So I'm sure Swinton's Art Supply has- I'd ask her, where is here? First of all, let me know where here is. is um, and and uh, I'd say something, the one thing I know about charcoal I'm not sure, how, I, I don't, I can't tell you how long it lasts because the charcoal that they used in the caves in Lascaux have not faded away and gone yet. And they're like thousands of years old. So I don't have an answer to that question, but I'm pretty sure a couple thousand, if you're not happy with a couple, couple 10,000 years, then I wouldn't use charcoal. I would abandon uh, it if you're worried about fading in 10,000 years. So no, actually, okay. probably the most the most permanent medium you can use. The only problem with charcoal isn't the charcoal. It's what you put it on. As long as you're putting it on acid-free good paper or a good substrate, whatever you're putting it on, that's the key is that it has to be on a good substrate. And then when I say charcoal, it's like uh, painting with anything. It's not about the medium that you use. It's not so much about charcoal. It's about the marriage of the medium and the surface that you're putting it on. And I used to hate charcoal and I used to hate Conte because it was so scratchy and gritty. And I, uh, they always made me paint on rough, uh, really rough newsprint and rough paper because it grabbed, but it was always bumpy and scritchy. And until someone showed me charcoal, on smooth paper, like I do most of my charcoal work is on arches, 90 pound smooth watercolor paper. And as soon as I paint it on that smooth paper, oh my Lord, it's the most beautiful thing in the world. So the marriage between the surface and the medium, that's what it's all about. If you can get that to work for you, then your creativeness will come out in it. But if you can't figure out what the medium is doing and the certain every time, just like it's just oil, oil painting, every time you oil paint, if you're on masonite one day and canvas the next day and some piece of something or other that you prime on a gesso board or whatever all of those require different handling of the medium of oil so you got to learn your substrate and in your 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 base so that so that whatever you're painting on with the medium you're using the marriage works together now, yeah, Doug, what, where is my she? Question. sorry hang on my a second where is, she? where is she that she doesn't get charcoal Oh, well, they got nothing there. Sorry. I don't know what's at the Medicine Hat College. They should have charcoal there, but Actually, I can sell you brand, charcoal. The brand Sorry, of charcoal ahead. they carry at the college is not very good at all. It's So that's why I was yeah, asking. You can get lumpy, lumpy charcoal and you can get charcoal with little hard bits in it. There's nothing worse than you're drawing along with a little piece yeah. of charcoal and a scratchy bit comes out. It's just the most annoying thing. So it's funny the the charcoal I used to use, which was a Demco brand, which is a cheap brand, was my very favorite. I can't get it anymore. They discontinued it, but I would have bought I would have bought literally a semi truck load of it. I liked it so much. The stuff I'm using now is 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 cheap, but it's uh it's just called Art Alternatives, but it's nice and smooth and soft. So I use a combination of three charcoals. I use a combination of vine charcoal to do most of my work. For detailed, highly detailed work in, in, inside there, I'll use a, a general charcoal pencil. I use a 6B. 
And then for my for my extra darks and my extra lights, I use alpha color charcoal, which is a big block about that big of charcoal. And the alpha color is super black. It is very non-erasable though. So when you use it, you got to know you're putting it in the right spot because if you don't like it, it doesn't erase. The regular charcoal, the vine charcoal, I use uh, extra soft vine charcoal. It erases with a kneaded eraser very good or blue tack. <laughs> blue tack works really good too. Um, it, it erases really, really good, uh, really easily, but that alpha color doesn't. And then I use a same stick in white, alpha color about that big. The white stick that I use, it, it, it pops to highlights. It's whiter. Um, like So I use an Arches 90 pound uh, smooth watercolor paper. It's kind of an off-white cream color. So the white, when you put it on, it just pops right off that page and makes your highlights go even a little bit higher. So I use a combination of three to three or, you know, three or four things when I'm doing it, but I like smooth paper. So when I was asking the question part. about, when I was asking the question about when you, um, you said that you paint with charcoal and when you use a thinner and then sort of obviously um, dilute your charcoal wherever it is on the paper. What I was wondering is like, how much does that lift after the fact or does that thinner sort of set the charcoal a bit? That's what I was asking. No, about. no, it, it's the same thing. So I'll tell you what I do. So I use two things. So I've done some big paintings, large paintings, and I use acetone. And mm -hmm. so when you use acetone, you need gloves and you need a mask. And when you put acetone in charcoal, it dissolves the charcoal and it becomes liquid paint. You can use a very big brush and paint with it. And the acetone evaporates in about 30 seconds. It disappears. And when it disappears, you have a painting in front of you, but it's all erasable. It's just like powdered charcoal. When the, when the acetone evaporates, it will become charcoal again and you can erase it. The reason I use acetone is because it, it evaporates in 30 seconds so I can continue drawing. You can use Gamsol or oil thinner, any of the odorless oil thinners work absolutely the same way. It, it's, the, it's fine. It's just that Gamsol doesn't evaporate for like 20 minutes. So when you put that on, you can't go in and draw on it because it melts the charcoal when you draw. You can't erase on it because Gamsol uh, melts your eraser. So you got to sit for 20 to 30 minutes while this thing dries. Mm. And it works in small areas. So I use it in small areas. On smaller paintings, I'll start at the top and I just work my way down and I keep wetting the area and drawing with it and painting with it. And I'll use a brush. I'll actually just paint with charcoal. And it works fantastic, but you've got to wait till it dries to go back into it. Um, acetone, it's stinky and it'll, 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 I don't know, eat your lungs out if you don't wear a mask, but it dries in 30 seconds. So you can get your initial wash in really good and then build up on it with the, with the thinner. Um, the only problem with doing that is when it's wet, it's very dark. It's very delicious and it looks so good. And when it dries and a liquid comes out, it's like a wet rock. You know, a wet rock looks really purple. And when it when it dries, it's just kind of slate gray. And you don't notice all the purple. When the Gamsol or the, the acetone comes out of it, it, it dries very flat. And you have this insatiable need to go back and draw over it to get those darks back. And you have to avoid that or you'll overwork your drawing. So you have to know that it'll stay flat until you varnish it. And I spray it with Kmart varnish. And when I do that, it turns all black again. And it looks just absolutely amazing. Thank but you, it's Doug. And it's still the hardest thing I have is to not go back and touch it because those darks disappeared on me. And I'm like, oh, I want them back. They look so good. And then I then I usually go up, screw up my drawing because I, I get in there with that alpha color charcoal and overdo it. So but, I'll teach you all the things I do wrong, I promise. When we had the demos before, we always put together a um, a project list like of supplies that you'd need for the project. So, and we always post that. Yeah, we'll have a pro I'll, every time I do this, I'll tell you what to buy way ahead of time, so you can get it. And listen, most of this is drawing, a little bit of painting, where any of the drawing stuff, cheap, cheap, and easy to find. Uh, the painting stuff will be whatever you paint with. I don't care if you're an acrylic oil, watercolor gouache. I don't care. Some of the painting stuff will be, you know, lots of this is about about composition and proportion and stuff like that. So it doesn't matter what you paint it. Okay. Um, 
if anybody else have any questions? It looks like it's we're using a quite a variety of materials and techniques. Well, I don't know yet because I haven't formulated everything, but <laughs> I am going to get you to like, we're going to start with probably just a sketchbook and a pencil for the first month or so. And we're just going to draw some stuff out and then we'll go to painting. I don't know how far you guys want to go. Like, I don't know if you guys want to do a charcoal painting or not, uh, but, but we'll see. But if you want to experiment with that, I'm willing to go down whatever avenues the group okay. decides. So if we get eight to 10 people in the group, fantastic. You guys decide and I'll take it whatever direction you want. But I'm going to tell you, your first couple of lessons are, are going to be basically on composition and, and design work and, and how, to, how to get things to not be 50-50 on your canvas. So we're going to, first two months is going to be less about figure and more about, I want you guys to get your design down. I will say this. I've said this a hundred thousand times, 90% of problems in a painting occur in the first five minutes. And I'm going to get you through that, that problem area. I also always say, I don't care if you have a, a, a weird, funky, triangular purple house. I don't care what kind of house you live in. What I do care if I live next door to you is that you have a good solid foundation that that house is on because I don't want that house to blow over in a windstorm and land on my house. So I want to make sure that your foundation is good. You want to build a purple house? Go ahead. Just put it on concrete and make sure the foundation is strong. I don't care what kind of painting you paint. I don't care what, what, what style you use. I don't care what colors you use. I don't care what medium you use. What I do care is that you have a solid foundation, um, right? The, the, the foundation that you're painting on works. Now, I'm going to say this. So while I'm on this course, I will tell you, this is what I truly believe. Two of the worst singers in the entire world are Bob Dylan and Willie Nelson. They're horrible. Neither one of them can sing, can sing. Neither one of them should sing. Neither one of them should make any money from music whatsoever in the singing area because they're horrible. Like, I don't know, Bob Dylan. <laughs> Willie Nelson is drunk, stoned all the time. You can't even tell what he's saying. And yet these guys are millionaires. Why? They both know how to write a song. They both know how to compose a song. They both know how to make absolutely wonderful music. And they both know how to paint three chords in the truth. And then it doesn't matter what your voice sounds like. If the underlying thing is strong enough, it doesn't matter what your voice is like. So I always say, it doesn't matter what your painting looks like, what, what style you do and how much color you use, whatever you want. If the foundation is good, look at, uh, one of my favorite painters in the world is Richard Diebenkorn. He's a, a 70s California expressionist, and he's like almost borderline abstract. I love his paintings, and they, they couldn't be further from what I paint, but I love his paintings, and yet they're all over the map. But when you break them down, all of them are solid design and solid, solid composition in there. So that's what I harp on. Everything I'm going to say always will be about composition and design. But it'll be peoply this time. Yeah. Less tree and more peoply. More peoply. Okay, questions, anyone? All right. I hope I answered a bunch of that for you. I hope you have, you feel comfortable with that. And 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 remember, this is mastery. So you stay as long as you want. You if you like it, you stay. If you want to transition out, you're more than welcome to transition out. Never gonna hurt my feelings if you leave. Everybody should learn from everybody. So you come, you stay for a while. Um, I will tell you that most of my groups have stayed for a long time, which makes me feel good. It means to me, at least I must be teaching something out here. And so I will give you uh, also, so there'll be homework. The homework is always light and easy. And I will tell you, your homework usually will take you no more than half an hour. I try to keep the homework, anything under, under an hour for sure. So I will give homework and that, but I also offer... You'll have my phone number. You can text me anytime with any problem. Once you sign up with me, you can text me with any problem. It doesn't have to be a peoply painting. If you have a problem with a painting, you need composition or, or like a critique or whatever. It doesn't have to be related to what we're doing. That's what you're going to get from me. I will help you anytime you want. You text it to me. And usually within the day, I'll get back to you and help you. If you need help with your homework, text me, text me. I always say, don't use the chat because I never go on the Mastery's chat thing. 
I, I forget and can never log on. But if you text me, I don't sleep well at night. So you text me three in the morning, uh, I'll fix your painting. Good. I fixed it. We're good to go. So yeah, you can send me anything anytime and I'll fix it. And you'll, you'll get lots of help. If you don't understand something, if you feel at all, like, well, I kind of didn't understand that it seemed like everybody else did text me. If you're, if you feel shy about it, text me and go, I'm not sure what that meant. Text me. I'm here. I'm here to help you the whole time. Don't worry about it. There's nothing you can say to me that I haven't heard before. All right. I hope that makes you feel more comfortable. So, Teresa, are you ready to paint peoply people? I'm scared, but I'm ready to paint. Huh? <laughs> All right. You you go out and start taking pictures of people on the Esplanade now in the evening with. Get them nice and backlit. Backlit people are always good to paint. So I'm going to start taking some photos with people in them, not just buildings and lines. No, don't be afraid of people. You know, I know, I know you keep saying, hey, hey, you with the dog, move. I'm trying to get a fence picture here. Get out of the way. <laughs> Put the dog and the guy in. Come on. So they try to take the picture because when I'm doing a portrait of a building, they don't want the dog or the person in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I understand. I'm just bugging you. You know that. All right. Well, I'm going to ask a question because I know a lot of your female form uh, figures have lots of boobies. So are we painting boobies or are we shying away? You might paint them. There'll be some boobs for sure, but we can paint male too. But, you know, I I'll tell you, um, though, we, you know, we'll paint a couple of husky males for sure. But I mean, the funny thing is, First of all, the male figure is very utilitarian and it's not curvy and round and sexy. I mean, you know, I, I don't often get when I hire models, any firefighters showing up. If I hire a model, I get two things. I get fat, bald, old guys that, that are semi-gay, <laughs> that have no problem being naked in front of people. And they're usually not the most well whatever to draw they're all right i've drawn them they're great whatever the other thing i get is younger guys that have staples and tattoos on every part of their body and they're extremely hard to draw because they're skinny they have no muscles and they're looking for 50 bucks you know so it's just like oh but for some reason the female form even the skinniest of skinny or the biggest of big are beautiful to draw. And, mm -hmm. and that's a natural okay. thing that God made females sexy and curvy so that men would procreate with them. And that's just the natural fact. So um, I do have me, I do hire male models and I've drawn lots of male and, and like good, a good muscular guy. I got this guy, Lee Tan. Oh my God. He's five foot nothing, but he will do a handstand for five minutes and you can draw him upside down. He's like some karate expert. He's killer to draw. I love it. But it's so rare that I get a good model like that. And like I say, firefighters never show up for me. So I, you know, I can't even get the chicks to come in and go, oh, it's firefighter night. Yay. So whatever. Yeah, there'll be a few boobs. But this isn't, this isn't about that. This is about, I'm going to try to relate this to the landscape and to all forms of art. This is less about the figure and more about learning to draw and curvy and gestures and, and things that will relate to other things. So yeah, it's going to be a couple of boobs, but eh, I'm not going to get all booby on things listen boobs don't sell anyways i <laughs> i sell figures in multiple galleries and nine out of ten of my my figures that sell are sold to females females buy them not males mm. um and when they buy them if i paint boobs too big they don't buy them nobody likes big giant boobs on their wall so they like the subtle curvy you know form of a of a woman that that's that's demure right they, they don't want they want those big boob boobs don't sell so i don't even hire models if they come with big boobs i'm like well you got to turn around i can't paint you know it's not going to work it ain't going to sell for me so no. <laughs> good question though no. thank you for that all right i throw it out there <laughs> it's good okay any any other any other questions you ask me whatever you want it doesn't have to be related to the figure ask me something while we're here because then you learn something I signed up. Oh, good. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that's good. We're gonna we're gonna yeah. learn something. That's for sure. <laughs> Teresa, let me tell you, Teresa's the best navigator too. So you're you're in capable hands because she's good. And, and and I only say that because without my navigator, I'm completely useless. So I have to text her and go, "What are we doing again? What did we learn? What did I do last month?" What? <laughs> 
what happened and um, and she'll text me are you, are you ready we're going and you know you better be on your phone on your online in 10 minutes she's she's on top of it so i love her dearly i i, mm -hmm. I specifically asked for her for this class i wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for her so you're i, I will also shout out to her then saying you're in capable hands because you got teresa as a navigator so you can't beat that <laughs> Yeah. Well, we okay, we, guys. <clears throat> all right. Did I answer all? I'm just wanted to see, make sure I answered everyone's questions. Uh, Roberta said that the night tram charcoal is good to purchase. Do you guys? Do they still make? Are they still making nitrum? I know we no. don't order anymore in the store, but the guy, his place burned down. Uh, whatever that guy, I forget his name now. He had some kind of weird name. He was Iranian or something. Uh, his place burned down and then he tried to set it up again and then he couldn't ship. And now I don't have nitrum charcoal anymore, but his nitrum, that pad that he had, so you could sand it and get the powder charcoal, his, his charcoal was the best. Do you know if he's still making it? Are you buying nitrum charcoal? Yeah, you know. I bought some recently. I bought some at, uh, just the beginning of the year for a drawing course I did. Oh, and where was that in? Where did you buy it? Well, I bought it at Opus in, in Victoria. Okay, they, I'll look into it, it again because I really liked his stuff. I can't remember his yeah. name. He had a funny name. Hmm. I liked him though. Yeah, I bought so much years ago that I like I've got boxes of it. Yeah. Oh well, nitrum is good charcoal, so don't worry about it. You just want to make sure it's the soft stuff. Uh, the only time I use the hard stuff is for detail. If I want to go into fingers or eyelashes or anything, I use the harder stuff. But usually the softer stuff is what I like. And I'm all about the softer edge. I, I like lost edges and soft edges. So, Yeah, you. Were, I yeah. was able to buy both the soft and the hard uh, nitrum. So Okay. And Opus, wow, that's good. I'm gonna, I'll look that up and check. Now I'm gonna yell at Ryan to buy some more because uh, they had this big paddle that you could buy and you could sand it. You could sand it down, and I would take that dust and I'd just rub it on my hands and I'd rub it all over the the paper, and then I'd start drawing on that. And it just okay. it looks so good because you got so many soft edges with it. Yeah. Well, and I think they sell a charcoal powder now too. They do. You can buy. Uh, you buy char. Well, that's what I do. So I buy yeah. the charcoal powder. And that's what I pour into the acetone to make a liquid. It makes liquid paint, liquid black is what it makes. Yeah. And it's so black and so juicy and so wonderful. Okay. It's messy though. Be prepared to have black fingernails. You look like a mechanic again. <laughs> um, Tell people you were digging potatoes all day. When I, when I did drawing lessons and stuff before, we used Conte. We didn't use that more than we used charcoal. Yeah, um, Conte's Conte's hard. Most Conte's, you know, even the even the you know four B Conte is pretty hard. It's great for gestural drawing. It isn't the best for smudging or or being smooth. Yeah, like you can take a knife and you can you know sand it down and get it to go smooth. I found charcoal a little easier than than that. Um, but Conte, I, I I do like Conte and I love Conte for gestural drawing for sure. Mm, yeah. Okay. I agree. Um, I mean, there's a little bit of everything. Everybody's got their own favorite and, and there's multiple things to draw with. Um, right. For those of you in watercolor, if you look for the, um, we sell something in a little square like this called gaff. And it's a little square thing that you can draw with and then you add water to it and it melts like crazy and makes a watercolor. It's really fun to do figures with as well because you mm -hmm. can do a sort of a gestural drawing and then just drip water on it and it makes a runny, runny painting. Okay. So I think it's called GAFF, G-A-F-F, -F, and it comes in, you know, multiple earth tones like dark green, dark brown, dark red, whatever, but, but that's, that's fun as well. The only thing I found that doesn't work as well, usually those watercolor pencils are just, they just don't melt enough, so. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I just wanted to mention, there's a couple of people that mentioned that they, they were going to be here for some of the class so you do have a month to watch the recording after we have the session and then you still have an opportunity to do the homework and submit the homework if you mm -hmm. can't make it to a class or um, there is that month in between that you can watch the session because mm -hmm. they're recorded sessions yeah if you can't do your homework it's no big deal we have a big chart where we mark tardy on it and then we show it to the all the rest of the class so when you get three tardies you know 
people just embarrass the heck out of you and go, wow, ooh, don't worry, it's no big deal. No, I don't, I don't do that. It's, yes. it's not a big deal. It's like it's, and you, you know, you watch the session and you can't get the homework done. Like, it's just no big deal. Like sometimes life and some months are busy exhibiting or life happens. Oh yeah, right? last, my uh, last other class just had the, uh, I can't think of her name, uh, not Brenda. Um, Oh, anyways, I can't think of her name. Um, she submitted her homework this month was last month's homework. She got confused. And so <laughs> we were doing rocks, but she sent in mountains. And I'm like, well, technically mountains are rocks. So maybe you're not wrong, but she got confused and didn't do this month's homework and did last month's homework. And I don't know, whatever. Anyways, she learned. So we're happy. As long as you're learning, you're, you're here to learn. That's all it is. And we, we get you to learn. That's it. <laughs> pressure is really on yourself right like if you take the homework and you want to spend hours doing it and submit it all that's fine too yeah. there's all sorts of gamuts out there of people that i'm only them. asking i'm only asking for 20 minutes of, mm -hmm. of, of 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 time other than the two hours i'm going to teach you per month i'm only asking for another 20 minutes it's not that bad yeah no oh, that's great yeah i just i just say you know if you can't find 20 minutes get off your goddamn phone and go to draw something. <laughs> so um, this is often yeah. I'm going to make an attempt to do it this time is actually watch the session over again multiple times because I know uh, with our group there were some ladies that did that and that really helps like reinforce the what Doug's teaching. So that's yeah. a really powerful tool to use throughout. Yeah, if, you, if you watch it over again, it's good because. You got to remember, you know, we have the celebrations, we have the little video, we have the chit chat at the beginning, there's chit chat at the end. So in a two hour session, there's, there's probably like 45 minutes worth of content that you have to watch in two sections. It's the critique on the homework and you can watch it because learning from other people's critique is fantastic. But if you don't want to watch that, you can watch your own again. But then the lesson, the lesson is usually most times the lesson is under half an hour. So you could rewatch this thing in 45 minutes and, and you could watch it twice and you'll get something out of it the second time as well. Yeah. And you've got to watch it. So, yeah. yeah. So good. Well, I think I've covered all my questions. Anybody else thought of anything else they'd like to ask, Doug? All anything right. Painting? We're good. Painting clouds, painting skies. Hey, don't, be, don't be afraid. I don't bite. <laughs> I've noticed <laughs> no all right and it's good to see some of you again and uh all right Roberta did you sign up I did oh you did okay good all right you're in all right yeah all right I'll probably you know, sign up too <laughs> okay that's good all right man I'm excited all right yeah. Okay. All right, then. Me. So well then, I'll say good night. And then for those of you, I'll see you on the 19th. And um, we're going to have, a, I don't know what I'm doing for a lesson, but we'll start with a lesson and away we go from there. Okay. And I'll, I'll prior to that, whatever, how many of us in the group, I'll send out a supply list of what or whatever we're doing. And I'll have, I'll do well beforehand. I'll have a lesson plan ready. So. Okay. Make sure you communicate with your navigator. Yes. yes. Yes, dear. I will. Like, like I got to worry. Like, you won't text me tomorrow going, you said you'd have a list. Do you have a list yet? <laughs> uh, great. Anyway, oh, thanks, my. Doug. And, yeah. Thanks, and then, Doug. Uh, and then for those of you who are there, I'll see you in October in Medicine Hat. Yes, at the, he's teaching at the Hat Art Club. Whoop, whoop. Oh, yeah, and if you if you're if you're not from Medicine Hat, come to Medicine Hat and take a workshop. It'll be fun. It's a good place to come visit. It is. If you all you come, I'll organize something for the Saturday night. Yes. Sounds, Sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Thanks Here's if you have any questions. Uh, actually, I'll get uh, before you leave. Uh, I'll just put, where is the chat here? I'll just put my phone number in the chat. If you have any other questions, uh, you can always, uh, just, uh, you can, uh, text me. Okay. If you think of something afterwards, I'll just put my number in there in case you need it, but go ahead and text me. There you go. All right. It's in. All right, guys. Happy Friday okay. night.
It's raining in Calgary for the first time in 40 days. Thank you very much and love you all. Goodbye. Okay, Bye. we'll Thank see you. you tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow morning. Oh, yeah. <laughs>